In this video, let's talk about using AI to understand your video content with 12 Labs. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. A special thanks to our sponsors for helping make our NAB coverage possible, Blackmagic and Atomos. And now back to the video. All right, I'm here with So Young from 12 Labs. So Young, nice to meet you. Great to meet you. So yes, tell me what is 12 Labs? Yeah, so 12 Labs uh, builds multimodal video foundation models that can understand everything inside your video. So basically what that means is we build AI models that can have human level understanding of any video, including visuals, sounds, language, temporal understanding, put all this together and contextualizing the video, uh, then you can do really cool things like describe any scene in everyday language, find exact time segments across hundreds of thousands of hours of video, but you can also generate language on top of the video. So generating summaries, descriptions, also okay. free-form prompt-based question answering. All of these language-based interaction of video is also possible through multiple video understanding. That's very cool. And so these are models that you are developing yourself? Correct. Okay. And how... What, what did the idea come behind this to start training your own models around this? Yeah. It's interesting because I think for video, uh, it's been neglected in terms of a, mm -hmm. in the AI world a little bit, where traditionally, uh, because it's so difficult to understand video data, it would be kind of misrepresented as an image problem or text problem. So uh, you would see, you know, object detection models that would take every frame from a video, extract the frame, which is an image, mm -hmm. and then you take all of the objects or a list of tags in an image, um, and you try to put that together, and given a video, you have 15 million tags in your metadata stack that doesn't actually let you find things or doesn't really align with human context. The other way to deal with video that we've seen is you do speech to text, which is transcribing a video, and you only analyze the transcript and text of the video. And you and I know why that's so lacking, because video is unique. And mm -hmm. it's really the context, the storyline, narrative that really matters for video. Um, so. From the start of the company and the, from where we started building out the research and tech stack, uh, we wanted to build an inception, large models that are born to understand video data. Yeah, just like humans, if you can understand the world around you uh, and hear and have that perception understanding, uh, that means this scales to any other modality as well. So if you can understand video really well, you can understand audio, image, and language really well. Like by understanding video, you can kind of reverse it and get better understandings out of other media formats? Exactly. And As, that's exactly right. And so what are you doing differently in training your models that doesn't just look at frames or just look at our uh, transcript? Yeah. So it's really that uh, what I just said about uh, video first mm -hmm. like ethos and kind of how... Uh, if we get into like the more technical side of things, how uh, the, found the foundation model stack is built, uh, where everything revolves around multimodal understanding. So it's, you know, the sound of audio wave of how, uh, you know, there may be crowd cheering, police sirens, all Some of these. bass booming in the background. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> the visual information, it's not just about what objects are there, but the relationships between objects, people, entities within a moment, how moments are connected over time, how things change, mm -hmm. because that determines our stories. Um, putting all of this modalities together to understand, to create that understanding. And I think that's how our technology is represented. On the product side of things, I think what we bring uniquely to the table, especially in the media space, is we don't focus on interface building. So mm -hmm. we focus on building the best video understanding models. We have APIs, which are basically software toolkits that developers can use. And other product builders, we have some incredible media asset management platforms that, that we're seeing at NAB, incredible video editing systems. Mm -hmm. But we want to help them power the intelligent features uh, and workflows. Right. So um, you are building the model and the, your model is build yes. the model, API, other exactly. companies can plug into your model and use it in, in whatever applications exactly. they want to. So it's incredible to see actually how, you know, you have different MAMs, you have different video editors, but mm. each one of those has uh, different experiences that they're building with, the mo with our model. And so even if they're in the same space, um, they're building different kind of work types of workflows. Yeah. And, so and really what cool. are some applications that you're either seeing or you yeah. think you would see uh, with people using the models from 12 Labs? So the most intuitive one, the first ones that we started to see is actually uh, to search in archive. Uh -huh. And uh, if you're a large sports organization, you mm -hmm. may have, you know, your decades worth of hundreds of thousands of hours of and petabytes of footage is really your treasure and it's your history, but it's also opportunity for you to repurpose that content, uh, license that out to audiences or kind of mediums that want to use our content, um, but it's not searchable, it's not tagged. And what's also interesting is that if I log or tag video a year ago, 
that context is going to va- va- change really quickly from when I look back this year. And so when I describe a moment um, in, in, in kind of context to what I want to create right now, if I have manually tagged all of those footers last year, they might not reflect this trend. And so that's why contextual understanding is so important. So like being able to search across this vast library and, and describe things like, I don't know, a woman standing in a black jacket, you know, wearing a black jacket in front of a monitor talking, um, whatever you need to find, it can be abstract. We also have like use cases of more abstract or emotional searches, of something heartwarming or okay. and things like that. You're able to find whatever you need. Uh, yeah. So that's the first. Anything that powers content creation is also something we're seeing, where you can combine the theme modality, you can combine the capabilities of video language generation and search to actually um, create an agent that can uh, do a conversational highlight real generator, for instance. And all of these are possible through kind of the model and the And is this one model or a couple of different models, options that you have? So it is actually a single model. Okay. And that is what's, I think, what's really powerful. And going beyond, even just beyond 12 labs, like if you think about large language models, it's a single model that can take in and write email, sales emails for right. me. But I can also ask it to write, you know, poems for my kids or something like that. Um, so it's horizontal, meaning it's just like a human. It understands a wide variety of context. And that's what's also very important for video, because if you have a model that can only do one narrow thing, it means it can't scale or have that contextual awareness of the world. And so we focus on building a single kind of very powerful, large pre-trained model that will look at animations, maybe in sports game footage, interviews, could be news, um, but also maybe it's, you know, my pet camera footage yeah. or something. But it would understand uh, all of these things. Uh, do you have the ability to kind of feed in your own data, people, or products, and be like, show me when this person appears, or show me when this product appears? That's a really interesting question. Actually, going back to what we were talking earlier about, if you understand video, it scales to different modalities mm-hmm. and data types. What we actually found with our latest Mario 2.6, uh, our video embedding model release, is that it has, state, it has state-of-the-art performance for not just text-to-video search, but also image to video retrieval or audio to video retrieval. Mm, yep. So if you have an image of a product and certain things are really hard to describe in length, uh-huh. right? So uh, if you have an image, you can just use that image to find contextually relevant moments across your library. Of that image or of that, whatever's in it. Exactly. Okay. And you could do the same thing with audio. We could also do text to image or text to audio searches as well. Audio like, uh, show me clips with this voice or this, uh, where we hear this voice in it. Like, yes, or like sound effects too. Like these okay. are like really hard to describe, right? Um, yeah, which they whoop or whatever. I, yeah, they're I, I know like so many versions yeah. of whoops, right? Yes. So. Yeah, so I mean, AI obviously a hot topic and you have sort of built something that sort of seems very practical use of AI, but kind of where do you see AI fitting in just like the larger media landscape and sort of how we like make content and deal with content? It's an interesting question. I think it's very layered. Yes. <laughs> and um, for AI cre- creation, uh, for us, we, especially for 12 Labs, we focus on providing all the best rich understanding of data that you have. Yeah. And so what we, you know, what we believe is that if you have ability to know exactly and leverage all of the data that you, all of the video library assets that you have, that you know, that opens up a lot of doors to different toolkits. Um, but our basically, our, what we want to do is like help power the workflow where you can actually focus on the creative storytelling aspect of things and not having to, you know, log or you don't have to go back and, you know, actually rewatch and scrub through content. It's uh, the speed of iteration um, of the creative iteration that you can go through. Uh, if you're thinking something in your mind and you want to see a rough cut of it or you want to put together a draft of it, you can actually do that very quickly with the help of AI. And, and I think that augmentation and helping with that process is kind of where we, uh, where we focus on. Yeah. Well, so yeah, thank you so yeah, much. I appreciate nice. the overview. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks. And that is it for this episode. Be sure to check out the rest of our NAB coverage over here at this playlist and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next episode.